What's up guys, Sarah Benjamin here for another video. Today I'm here with my good friend Ty. Lately on my channel we've been focusing on some different things. We've done some closed guard videos on some arm bar finishes and trimal finishes. I'll link those in the description. We also went over a butterfly guard passing segment that went way longer than I had anticipated but I went over a bunch of ways to basically engage your role. Today I wanted to go over some takedowns. One question I get asked a lot from messages, comments, uh, all over the place is do you stand when you compete? If so, what do you do? And do you have any takes on an easy way to do a double leg? I find it really hard to do because I'm a smaller guy and I can't take down bigger guys. So that's a very, very good point. I do stand a lot when I compete and I love ankle picks. I've already made a 10 minute video on a bunch of different ankle pick options, so I will link that above. But today I wanna to go over double legs that are efficient for smaller people. So. We're gonna take advantage of inside and outside leg trips while utilizing the double leg. So when I do a double leg, I don't like the traditional take them down, cut the angle, and push, especially because I'm much smaller. So the traditional double leg, just to do it very quickly, is we separate the wrist, we somehow get the hands out of our way, we drop to the front knee, we keep our back straight, right, hip close, we grab below the knees or up high, and then we cut the angle to the right. Right? We cut away from our head and we utilize our hands to off balance his lower body and our head to direct his upper body. Amazing. I can't say anything bad about the double leg. It's the, probably the highest percentage takedown ever in any combat sport. But I do have some variations that make it much easier for me. And some of you might even comment that they're not even double leg variations, uh, more like inside or outside leg trips or judo terminology I believe is like kouchi or ochigari. But I kind of combine the two. So the way that I like to set up my double leg is with arm drags. Anytime I'm standing, I'm looking for ankle picks for the most part. But if the guy's doing well hand fighting and I can't get anything, then I'm just looking for same side wrist control, right? I just want to control the same side wrist. And then I want to take advantage of a traditional arm drag, right? So how do I drag? So I just want to come separate the arm just a little bit. So grab and pull because I'm working quickly. My right hand comes through, thumb here. I don't grab his arm. If you're a beginner watching this, I keep my hand like this. I grab right behind his tricep, and then I bring his arm here. Now, I don't hang out here because he can take advantage of a redrag. If I hold his arm, he's going to redrag me, and then we're going to get into this battle. So when I drag, a good friend of mine who was a collegiate wrestler that I used to train with, and we used to work wrestling all the time, his name was Wes Diaz, told me to pretend I was like throwing a football. And for some reason, I learned that like 10 years ago and it just stuck. So drag and, and like, like you're throwing a football backwards to your buddy. I know that sounds crazy, but it stuck with me. So grab the wrist and here. And I opened my arm. I opened my arm in anticipation of the shot because I don't just drag and stay here. I do this, right? And I come here and this provides a frame so that Ty can't re-drag me. So let's turn side. So first thing you have to practice is your entry, which is your drag. So we're here, and we're here. Practice your shot first, right? It's a good drill. Boom, here, and we practice our shot. Now, once we've got that down pat, we're gonna start implementing the inside leg trip first. I've always asked students which is harder for them, inside or outside leg trip, and a lot of them say both. Um, some say outside, some say inside, so we're gonna show both. The inside leg trip is gonna look like this. I'm gonna do it quickly. So here, and I take him down one more time. Right over here, and I take him down. Okay, so that's our inside leg trip. So how do we do it? Basically, I want to bring his foot up, okay? And then when I shoot, I'm shooting at like a hip position where my hip is on the floor. So bring your foot forward like this. But the biggest mistake I see, and this is very hard for me to teach slowly and I've always struggled with it, is that people don't want to commit and they don't want to give themselves the forward momentum, which is what you need to actually successfully take them down. What I mean by forward momentum is they stop themselves to practice it like this. They do this. Now guys, I'm on my toes here. It's much less effective when I'm on my toes. The way that I want to be is here. I want to be able to see the bottom of my foot because I'm going to use it to swipe as I hit his hip. Okay, so I hit his hip 
and his leg and swipe. Again, I told you it's hard for me to do slow. Keep your leg there. So when I'm doing it quicker, right, I'm here like that, guys. You don't want to stop yourself. If I stop myself, what's your leg for? It can be kind of awkward. And I'm pushing into him and I don't have much base. If Ty gets an underhook, he might slam me back this way. And I might be in trouble. So I want to come right through him and bring my foot in like this. So we're here. And I hit. Okay, one more time. We're here. And I hit, guys. I want to swipe his ankle out. Okay? That's the inside leg trip. So let yourself fall forward. Practice that without somebody here, here, and just let yourself fall. Because if you stop yourself, it's going to be less effective. The outside leg trip, put your leg forward, is the same thing, but with the outside leg. I prefer inside. So outside would be, I open his hands, we would use the arm drag, back straight, outside leg trails around. I want to be able to see the bottom of my foot, and I fall at an angle as I bring him with me like so. Again, I don't want to be on my toes, guys. So we'll put forward. I don't want to be here. Look at the point of contact. My calf is on his calf. If he has good base and his hips are heavy, I can get in a lot of trouble here. So I would shoot, keep your foot forward, like this. Okay, and then immediately come into the half guard in a strong position. So one more time, foot forward, without the grips. Okay, so practice your foot placement and practice shooting into it. The best example of the inside leg trip is Marcelo Garcia. His timing is so good with it. And another guy that shows how effective it is is JT Torres. Look up JT Torres and Marcelo Garcia takedown highlights. And they're both so good at it. And it's a low risk finish because even if I miss the trip, I'm still in a double leg. So if my timing's off and I do this, I can still correct and go. Right, but I want to try to drag, shoot, and go, or outside, drag, shoot, and go. That one looks sloppy, so one more time, I shoot with everything forward, and I come up. So guys, much easier than traditional double legs if you're smaller, because you're more reliant on off balances of the lower body with the tripping mechanism, as opposed to some force by using your upper body too. So give it a shot guys. If you like this video and want to see more standing options for smaller guys, please let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks to my friend Ty. Always guys.